everyone. I hope you're doing good. Yeah. Uh, you get to have some wings. <laughs> uh, I am from Sudan, uh, North Africa. I don't know if you know the word Sudan, what it means, but uh, Aswat in Arabic, it means black. Sudan, it means the black man. Uh, the reason I don't look Sudanese because my grandparents from Syria, but over a hundred years ago, uh, Turkish took over the Middle East. Muslims, they don't call it occupation. If a Muslim country took over another Muslim country, they don't consider it occupation. It was fine for them to enter another country, Islamic country. But as a result, my Christian or nominal Christian parents, grandparents, and many other Christians or nominal Christians uh, in Syria, they had to leave the country. They run away for their lives. Uh, I ended, my parents and myself we were born in Africa and Sudan. Uh, it was a very safe place to be uh, until also Islamic law started taking over Sudan. Uh, and for a period of 10 years after the British left Sudan, uh, we have over 2.5 million Christians being killed. Black Christian in Sudan being killed by Islam in the name of Islam. Uh, but with all that, I, I love the Muslim people. I, I don't blame them for any of these things. I believe the problem is with the teaching of the Quran and the teaching of Islam. I was required to study in period of time. It's based on the law of the land at that time. Sometimes I was required to memorize and study the Quran. And there's a time that we were, as Christians, we were able to get away with that class and go to Christian centers to learn Christianity. <coughs> but when I studied in Islam during that time, uh, Make me recognize that there's no assurance of salvation in Islam. There's no way to guarantee heaven according to Islam. And that's why when I came to Christ and know that by accepting Christ as a Lord and Savior, that I can guarantee heaven, I felt like this is the best news ever to tell my Muslim friends. I was born among them, I love them, they're my friends, and, and that's why I was excited to share the gospel with them. And for the last over 30 years, 35 years, I've been sharing the gospel with Muslims. Um, if we have any problem, it's not with the Muslim people, it's with the teaching of the Quran, the teaching of the Hadith, the teaching Hadith, it means the sayings of Muhammad. The Quran is supposed to be the one revealed by Allah. The Hadith is things that report of what Muhammad said. And also there's a Sunnah, the life of Muhammad, uh, a book that very respected by Muslims, they have uh, to see why, why the artist life of Muhammad is important because the Quran says that Muhammad is an example to all mankind. As a result, they have to see what Muhammad did in his life and they have to do the same. Uh, but from all their material, I know what I mean, what in fact there's no assurance of salvation in Islam. And that's why I got. How does how God put it in my heart to reach out to Muslims with the gospel? Uh, who has the word of God? Christians or Muslims? This is this was uh, Paul's prayer toward uh, Israel, but it is my prayer toward Muslims as well, brother. My heart desire and prayer to God for the Muslims uh, is that may they may be saved, for I bear a record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. I, I really, I am a witness of how committed Muslims are. Uh, I lived among them, I know how committed they are. Uh, they pray five times a day, they, uh, they fast the whole month of Ramadan from sunrise to sunset, and they really have a passion, and that's what made me really one of the things that I love to talk to Muslims because they are willing to talk about the, the spiritual stuff. I don't believe we worship the same God, but at, at least they, they believe there's a creator, not like big people denying the existence of God. Uh, and also they believe uh, about Jesus, even though I disagree, he's not, I don't believe he's the same Jesus, uh, but like there's a lot of similarities, but it's not I cannot agree in any way that we worship the same God. How? Why is that? 
because when I study Islam, I see the character of the God of the Bible is different than the character of the God of Islam. And why? Uh, I, I believe uh, the God of this world, according to the Bible, the God of this world is Satan that uh, blinded the eyes of those who believe not. They are being blinded, blinded by Satan. That's why they don't see the truth of the gospel. In chapter 3, verse 54 of the Quran, it says, They were deceiving, and Allah was deceiving, for Allah the best of the deceiving ones. That's in the Quran. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying this to insult Muslims or anything like that, but this is in black and white. That's in the Quran, written in black and white. Uh, according to the Bible, that's not God. God is not the deceiver. Uh, Muslims usually change in their translation. If you, I have many different translations of the Quran, usually they change the word deceiver to planner. Uh, I would like if they change it here, I would like to change it in this verse as well, because it is the same word used in both verses. <coughs> Let's read this verse with changing it to planner. And I, before I do that, I ask them, okay, mean planner, my Muslim friend? Yes, mean planner. Do you trust Allah's plan for your life? They will say, absolutely. Then we take them to this verse, where they feel secure from the plan of Allah. Men feel secure from the plan of Allah, except those shall lose. And here, referring to the Day of Judgment, if you trust the plans of Allah for your life, you're going to help. Like, if they want to change the word deceiver to planner here, they must change it here. And in that case, my question to them, would they, would they trust Allah's plan for their life? It's a big problem. Translation is a big problem because even Muslims who admit that the English Quran is not a Quran, it's not the word of Allah, it has to be in Arabic in order to be God's word. And because of that, no matter what translation you bring, they're going to tell, oh, that's a wrong translation, oh, that's a wrong translation. In my answer to that, then Islam does not belong here. If it cannot be translated, it's not, because I have like 30 something translations and none of them is accurate translation. The penalty of leaving Islam is death, Hukmar Ridda. The day Muhammad died, so many Muslims were gonna leave Islam and they were enforced by Hukmar Ridda by Abu Bakr, the first successor of his Muhammad. And the, that's one of the things you want to keep in mind when you are sharing the gospel with Muslims. You are asking them to leave Islam and the penalty is death, according to Islam. They may say, oh, that's, they don't do that in America here, but that's the rules of Islam. But when a Muslim overcomes that fear of leaving Islam, they make the best Christians ever. The only unforgivable sin in Islam is shirk is to believe in more than one God. When we tell them to believe in Jesus as God, the Father is God, the Holy Spirit is God, they think we are saying three gods. As a result, they say this is the unforgivable sin. By calling them to Christianity, they think we are asking them to commit the unforgivable sin. And that's why it's a very challenging for Muslims. They struggle a lot before they leave Islam and come to Christ. But, it's not because they misunderstand that, but because Allah, in the pages of the Quran itself, He has a conversation between Jesus and Allah. Jesus, Allah telling Jesus, did He tell the people to take you and your mother to God's beside you? And what did Jesus say? No, 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 I never said that. What's happening here, Allah think that the Bible teaches the Trinity is Father, Mother, and a Son. And that's not the case. There's no one, any Christian in this room here, believe that God, the Triune God, is Father, Mother, and Son. A true God will know what's in the pages of this Bible. Some Muslims say, oh, there was a group of Christians at that time taught that worship it, Mary as God. But my question to them, what do you call an individual that accuse all Muslims of terrorism 
just because an act of Osama bin Laden. That's not right. You cannot just because an act of an individual, you label all Muslims as bad people. You have to study the Quran. You have to study the Hadith to come to that conclusion. Uh, for Allah to say that all Christians, <clears throat> or make it labeled Christians as believing in father and mother and son, that's also not right. That's not right. This, there's nothing in the Bible that says that Mary is God or part of the triune God. Another verse in the Quran says, say not three. How many Christians in this room here? How many Christians? Okay. Any of you believe in three, do in three gods? Raise your hand, please. We don't believe in three gods. We believe in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. In the name, not the names, not three gods. One God exists in three persons. The Christians have fear, and it's not an Islamophobia, like what they say, because history proven that Islam is very violent. And so many Christians, as I just started in saying, in my country, Sudan, 2.5 million Christians being killed. The fear uh, of violence in the Quran, like in uh, chapter 9, 29, and many other chapters, uh, very, very clear violence in the Quran and the Hadith. Uh, I cannot deny that. But as I told you earlier, you cannot blame Muslims for that. That's written in the Quran. They have no right to change the Quran. They have no right to change the things. It is written in their book. The problem is the teaching of the Quran, not the people. Majority of Muslims in this country and other, across the world, they are very loving, kind people. Uh, also, Christians have a fear of un the unknown. They don't know what Islam really teaches. When you're talking to Muslims, you don't know what, how they're going to reply. And how we, we do need to to study. We need to. We are called to uh, be ready to give an answer, to study the Word of God. But also, I do encourage you to study the Quran. I do encourage you that. But keep in mind, the English Quran is not considered Quran. Any Muslim in this room here will tell you the Quran has to be in Arabic. Translation is not really accurate. Translate is Word of God. That's why when you read the Quran in any translation, I want you to ignore anything between parentheses because it's not in Arabic. It's meant to lead you and direct you to different direction. In chapter 3, verse 28, it allows Muslims to deceive non-Muslims in the Quran. The Bible tells us to be ready to give an answer. The word answer here, or reason, uh, is apologia, apologetics. We are all to be apologists to defend the deed of Christ, to defend the Bible, word of God, to defend uh, the crucifixion of our Lord and Savior and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Islam attacks the heart of Christianity. Islam attacks the deity of Christ. And Muslims they call that just discussion. They don't call it violent or attack or mean or anything like that. Uh, they attack the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and when he defended the crucifixion and the deed of Christ from the Bible, they can tell you your Bible be corrupted. They're going to tell you you have many Bibles. Sometimes they meant New and Old Testament. That's what they meant by many Bibles. Sometimes, like earlier at the table, uh, someone say, Mark, Matthew, Luke, John, that's you have many Bibles. But any Christian in this room knows that they're all contained in one, God, in one book it's called the Word of God. All of them is in one book. It's not different Bibles. Uh, sometimes they made translation. Earlier someone said, you have King James, you have this and that. Uh, I have in the table here a uh, few Quran translations. If this makes Christianity false because we have different translations in English, then the Quran is false as well. We cannot pick and choose. You have to use the same standard for both religion. Uh, That's why it's very important to study God's Word. Uh, 
Muslims, they have a big problem by saying that God's word being corrupted, and we are going to conclude with that in the end. Uh, but let's see if the Quran, what the Quran claimed first. Uh, is anyone here with loud voice can read these passages? Would you? No? So, uh, so number one, eternal, uh, preserved on a golden tablet in heaven, uh, perfect, that is the book, there is no doubt therein, a guide to the pious, unchanged. Uh, verily we have sent down the reminder, and verily we will guard it. The Quran claimed to be eternal, perfect, unchanged. I hear that all my life. The Quran is perfect, eternal, unchanged. Muslims put their trust in this book. Whatever this book told them to do, they don't question it. They have to follow it to the letter. No matter what this book told them, and I'm going to show you example of that later, they don't even think, they follow it blindly. If you are out of Islam and Christianity, and you come in to uh, examine and see there's the Jewish religion, there's the Christianity, there's Islam, you, 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 you're going to try to build a criteria to examine which book is true, which book should I follow. But that's not the case with Islam. Islam believe and teaches that we are all born Muslims, that you, your parents maybe caused you to be Christians or something else. They believe Abraham was a Muslim, they believe, believe Adam was a Muslim, and even sometimes I question who's the first Muslims, because some places they talk about Abraham being the first Muslim, some places say Adam is the first Muslim. Uh, but this book here, what they follow blindly, they don't ask questions. But my challenge and my encouragement to my Muslim friends to bring a big, huge, paper, bigger, way bigger than this, and put Bible inside of it. Put a Bible inside, write your reasons why you reject the Bible as true word of God. And then be honest, take the Bible and put the Quran, and see if the Quran, will, you can use the same criteria you chose, you built, to be, examine God's word, uh, the Bible. See if you can examine the Quran with the same criteria you chose. But Muslims, they don't. They don't question the Quran. That's what's sad about it. They just follow blindly, even though they are told to not gamble. And when I ask Muslims why you're not supposed to gamble, because say God provided blessings, money, by gambling, you're wasting God's blessings. But which one is more valuable, your eternity or the money, the temporary stuff in this world? Which one is more valuable? If God does not want you to gamble with money, does he want you to gamble with your life? There's only one life. And after that, the judgment, you're going to stand before God. Where are you going to spend eternity? Muslims believe there's eternal life in hell or heaven. I disagree what heaven is in Islam and Christianity. It's a big difference. Uh, but that's not our topic today. But you believe there's eternal eternity in heaven or hell. Where are you going to spend it? There's a judgment day. It's a very important for them to know where we're spending eternity. What about the Bible? Yes? Um, I, I didn't follow the thread between what you were trying to say. They're, they're not supposed to gamble, but you're saying they're gambling. There's an eternity because they're not allowed to question the Quran. If they follow the Quran blindly without questioning, let me give you an example of that. Muslims, Islam teaches that bowing down is only to God. And bowing down is an act of worship. Muhammad said, if, if bowing down is permitted, I will order the wife to bow down to her husband. It means what? If it was, that means it's not allowed to bow down to anyone beside God. He did not say, wife, bow down out of respect to your husband and bow down to God out of worship. He did not say there's two different kinds of bowing. He said, if bowing down is permitted for someone else beside God, I will order the wife to bow down to her husband. This, we made it clear, even downstairs earlier, or upstairs, I don't know where we are, uh, they agree. Bowing down is only to God and it's act of worship. According to Islam, or the Quran, that Satan becomes Satan. Why? 
because Allah ordered the angels to bow down to Adam and Satan is the only one rejected to commit an act of shirk to worship someone else beside God that's why he became Satan is that making sense? if shirk, the unforgivable sin is part of the criteria they put here to examine if the Bible were the God and then they put the Quran then the Quran would not stand why? Because act of worship, an act of worship, it being committed, Allah Himself ordering angels to bow down to a man. Oh no no, it's okay if Allah order it. They don't question this book. They don't question this book. Yes. Is that is that because it's under the guise of a competent authority, which is Allah in this case? Is it fair to? Is that a fair criticism? Like, I, Allah says a lot of things to a lot of people in the book. Like, um, to, to go and, let's say, you know, commit your act, right? Like, if it was a human making that same kind of, like, go, go kill, it would probably be wrong. But if it, because it's God saying to do those things, that changes the act of it. So I could make the claim that it's never right. Yeah, I kill. understand the point about uh, God ordering to kill uh, yeah. as an act of judgment because God, sure. even. Israel, his people, when they went out flying, he will raise their enemies to take over sure. them. God does not take sides. When his, sure. even his people go out of line, he will raise their enemies to judge them. That's different than Islam. In Islam, no. Muslims, 1.5 billion or more in the world, bowing down toward Mecca, to toward this black stone that used to be an idol worship by idol worshippers, it's okay. It's okay. Muslims can... Uh, marriage is supposed to be for one woman, but in Islam, okay, four. Then the rules is for we agree to it. Then their prophet has an exemption. He can do 15 wives or more. Uh, temporary marriage. If you are far from your wife, you can find a woman, and you can ask her how much you pay her and how long you be with her. It's permitted in Islam. Mut'al marriage. Uh, there's a lot of, I can show you the Ten Commandments in the Quran, but also I can show you that Allah gives them a special treatment that they can do it and it's okay. And because they're going to go through hell, they're going to pay for it, and then they're going to be maybe make it to the other side. But about, about violence, yes, I don't have a problem with the violence if it's ordered by God, but God, He ordered violence as an act of judgment, even His own people, He would punish them. Not because you are my people, you get away with it, you do the sin, and commit and drink and all that stuff, and your cave is fine, but not as a people. But the problem here with the act of worship, if this is the unforgivable sin, this is the no, no. You get killed for it. This is the only thing Allah will never forgive, to worship someone else beside God. And if bowing down is an act of worship, how can Allah record that? How can Allah will order that? It doesn't make any sense. But if the Allah said it, it's fine. They don't question that. Yes? We should be able to make the comparison in the sense of, you know, rise, kill, and eat, referring to animals that were formerly unclean. I'm so sorry. Say that again. For me. So I'm, I'm trying to think of a like possible, I am a Christian. I'm just trying to okay. think through how you discuss it with somebody. If the rebuttal may be, well, God has now declared certain foods to be clean. And not, earlier he did not. And he did not. Would you say that the difference would be that there is now, God is not punishing those who are still in the old covenant. And in that verse is here, you're saying that the angels, or Satan was punished for not following there. It wasn't a, this is now permissible. It seems to be a reversal rather than an addition. Well, when it comes to the Bible, we have 1,500 years. Here is 23 years. 23 years. Two periods, 10 years in Mecca and 13 years in Medina. In 23 years, there's abrogation. Think that that's what it mean abrogation. Allah will speak now, but he changed his mind later. Uh, there, there's a lot of abrogation like that here uh, in 23 years. But when we come to the Bible, we have 1,500 years of revelation. Yes, there is changes, not, not to it when it comes to the unforgivable sin. This is doesn't make any sense that the unforgivable sin that Allah will change that. It's okay to do it now. The Bible talks about God being a jealous God, that He will not want you to worship other gods. 
But and if it's an act of worship, if it's an act of worship, you cannot, although we're not ordering, if, if we're going to go with abrogation, we can whenever we want, then really there's no way we can hold this book accountable and we cannot examine if this book from God or not. We have to come with a criteria. If you examine a book, you have more than one book, you need to examine them. How are we going to examine them if ever saying that, oh, Allah can do whatever he wants? Allah cannot do it. Our God will not sin. Our God will not again go against his nature. Not, I don't care what people say, but our God will not go against his nature and sin and commit sin. Allah will not commit sin if he's a true God. Yes? Um, I get So the distinction I would point out there is that for the food sample, uh, the clean vision are no longer or vice yeah. versa. Um, those are written in the book itself, but you're making a distinction between what the prophet himself, uh, arguably um, a valuable man, and what the book itself says, which is not, uh, that doesn't seem like an apples to apples comparison, because what he mentioned, it's in the book, and then later on in the book it changes. The other thing is, uh, he, uh, some human, valuable or not, says it, and the book. But, but, if you ask Muslims, it's Muhammad said. Most, uh, according to Muslims, uh, prophets they don't sin. I do believe that prophets sin. The real prophets sin. But according to Islam, prophets they don't sin. They take Muhammad as an example for all mankind. Whatever Muhammad did, you have to do. They take him in a different level. I will give you an example. The Quran, Allah's word, they say the penalty for adultery is what? 100 lashes. The hadith, because Muhammad practiced is stoning, Muslims, they hadith, even though they, every Muslim will admit, maybe Shia or not, but Sunni Muslims, the majority of Muslims in the world, they will admit that hadith is a word of man, reporting things that Muhammad said, and they, um, that hadith is, is stoning. And that's why when they practice today, it's stoning. Not, not, if they stood, the Quran and the hadith disagree, they go with not the Quran. You would think they would go with Allah's word, but no, they go with the hadith. There's many evidence of that, that they go with the hadith. Yes? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, back to those two cases, yeah. um, the commanding other people to worship and then saying, hey, you can now eat uh, all these different foods. Um, one of them is of a moral nature, yeah. right? Whereas the other one is of a uh, legal nature that was for the people of Israel. And so things of a, le of a moral nature, like wouldn't really be able to change because those are based on God's character. But a law given to a people at a certain time, uh, people who are no longer in that time or of a different people, it wouldn't really apply there. And so I think that's the main uh, dividing line between those two cases. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, um, you know, for example, like thou shalt not murder, that applies to all people at all times. Uh, do not commit idolatry, all people at all times. And so when Allah says, hey, don't bow down to and worship anyone because that's unforgivable, but then commands that immoral thing later, you would either have or even before, yeah, or even before. Um, then that, that that's where the problem really arises. Yeah, I think. Now, when it comes to the Bible manuscripts, if you're going back to what we have, uh, the Bible, so our topic, uh, two hundred years before Jesus, eight, before Jesus came to this world, eight hundred years before Muhammad, we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. I don't know if you get the opportunity to see this. Uh, uh, in a Bible museums or regular mu museums, sometimes they bring, bring them for a tour. But you can also Google and look at them. This manuscript uh, contained almost the whole Bible except the book of Esther. It was discovered by a Muslim shepherd in Israel or Palestine. And that uh, shepherd, he was uh, throwing rocks inside the cave to get the goats out of there. He heard the clay breaking. He went in there and he discovered them. And he did not know how valuable they are. He started burning some of it. It's, ex it's possible the Book of Easter was there and he burned it. But when we say the Dead Sea Scrolls, it's not just one copy. There's many copies of the Book of Isaiah. If we don't have the entire Bible, just we have the, the Book of Isaiah, which is what, seven, eight hundred years before Jesus was born, he came to this world? Seven, eight hundred years before? And he talks about Jesus' crucifixion, he talks about Jesus being God? This is even before Jesus came to this world as a, as a baby and grew up among us, as seven, eight hundred years prior, from the book of Isaiah alone, from the book of Psalms, I can go to Psalms 22. 
when Jesus was on the cross, he crying out, uh, Father, uh, uh, my God, my God, why you forsake me? The Muslims are stuck in that. They use that phrase. Jesus is screaming, my God, my God. How can he be God if he's saying, my God, my God? But Jesus, what he did on that cross, when he's, he was starting the first part of the chapter 22 of Psalms, and when you read the rest of the book, that chapter, Jesus was, the, he, that's a habit of the Jewish people. They, once the rabbi start the chapter, they will start reciting the entire chapter in their heads or out loud. And if you read that chapter, they talk about them casting a lot with, to win who wins his clothes. They talk about they pierced my hands. Everything they just done to him. And he's on that cross. He started that chapter for them to recite it. And it described exactly that, that thousand years, not seven, eight hundred years, thousand years before Jesus was crucified, it talked about what can happen in that cross. It's so powerful. Muslims are stuck on that, Father, uh, my God, my God, why you forsake me? But that's a good point I would like to go ahead. It's also uh, before crucifixion was even a thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was not discovered until later. Right. But now, why Jesus called God? God. Does Jesus have a God? Many Christians maybe without recognizing they say no. And if you say no, then you're going to see Jesus' own words, don't touch me yet because I did not go to my father, your father, my God, and your God. Jesus saying he has a God. How come? If Jesus have a God, can he be God? That's a very important question to answer. In Jeremiah chapter 32, it says, God is the God of all flesh. God is the God of all flesh. Jesus chose to come to this world to die for your sin. In order to do that, he must take upon himself a second nature as a man. And that's why in the same chapter, in chapter 22 of Psalms, in verse 10, it says, from the womb, you became my God. From the womb, you became my God. What happened in the womb? He became flesh. The moment Jesus became flesh in his mom's womb, Mary, the one he chose to come to this world through her, the moment he became flesh in his side of her, he submitted to the Father as his God. Why? Because that's how much he loved you and loved me. He came and laid down his life for us. Yes, Jesus, that's part of the price that he paid for our sin. Because we sin against an eternal God, Jesus for eternity can have that body and he can submit to the Father as his God. But did Jesus stop being God? No. Jesus 100% God and 100% man. He has two nature, fully God and fully man. As a man, he will continually submitting to the Father as his God. And that's something that we are not going to apologize for or ashamed of. God is the God of Jesus in the flesh. And the reason is because that's how much he loved us. If you are a parent, if you have kids, and maybe one day you will have kids. If you're a kid, and if you're going to work first of all, and wearing a suit and nice clothes, and you have a deadline, and you saw your kids falling, your son or your daughter falling in the mud, would you just gonna leave that child in the mud and leave for your work? Or are you willing to go and save your child and get him out of there? Or her out of there. Is that going to make you less godly or bad mom or less value because you loved your child that much? Muslims say, God, come from heaven to earth today, go to the bathroom, but this is a big problem. No, our God is an awesome God and it's a perfect God because He's a triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. He's able to do so. I agree 100% the God of Islam is unable to do that. Why? Because according to them, he is one. Just one. Simple one. That's what they say. There's a lot of problems with what the Islam teaches about God. But if they say God is one, even though the Quran says Allah is wadud, which means loving, but it's a conditional love. Imam Ghazali, one of the commentators of the Quran, he said, if Allah loves, that's offensive to say Allah love, because if he loves, he have a sense of need, he need to love someone. 
I absolutely agree. If Allah is just one, not like the God of the Bible, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, absolutely He will have to need someone to practice His love. But our God is a relational God from eternity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit in relationship. He did not change after He created the universe. He did not start loving after He created us. No, for eternity, from no beginning, Father, Son, Holy Spirit love the Father, love the Son, the Son, love the Father, the, they are in that relationship together. But Islam, we believe in the word Trinity, they believe in the word Tawheed. Tawheed. I, I see an American guy converted to Islam because a Muslim gave them a Bible, say, show me the word Trinity in the Bible. Oh, we couldn't find it. Guess what? The word Tawheed is not in the Quran. If this is, I want, that's why I want them to do a paper and write down the reason. If this is enough reason to reject the Bible because the word Trinity is not there, then reject the Quran because the word Tawheed is not in the Quran. Yes, sir. I think this is just a misunderstanding of my theology, but what, what does it mean to say <coughs> that um, Jesus is uh, God in, in the flesh? But doesn't that, like, and, and to say that there's this like, eternally, um, be, but to me, something but is, is the flesh a material thing? Because the material world didn't exist eternally, right? So what? Now, how Jesus, can... Jesus forever gonna stay in that flesh, but he did, he was not from the from the beginning that flesh. That flesh started when when he was born through Mary, when she became pregnant with him. So so God took on a second different, nature, different natures, a second nature, from the, okay, an Adam, okay. To, to Jesus' name. The second, the, God is the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The second person in the Trinity, in the Triune God, Jesus, he took upon himself 2,000 years ago a, a nature of human. Sure. So, so then, if you agree with Muslims that it, if, if God is truly one, um, that there are certain qualities that you would like, you wouldn't have the need for love, be, or have love because he doesn't need it, right? Um, doesn't that bring about a lot of theological questions? Like, did he, uh, did God love us before he took on the, the form of life? Or yeah, before, the Father, the Son, the Father, BCE, the Father, right? Son, right? Holy Spirit Boy. always existed. The second nature of Jesus existed as, at, at uh, conception and his mom's womb. But before that, always Father, Son, Holy Spirit existed. So the son, the, the son is distinct from Jesus. The no, this, Jesus is the son. Is always being uh -huh. the son of God. But in two thousand years ago, he took upon himself a second nature as a man. Okay. Even okay. even okay. after okay. even after the sec before the second nature that being mm. it happened it started. Right. Jesus always existed. Sure, okay, but he didn't exist in flesh. And before, he did not exist in and, flesh. And if those, so again, if, if your claim is that, um, for, for the Muslims, that if, if he's one and he needs to exist in the form of a, of a man to be able to experience, like, the... the I, I, not, when I, I, I say I, I, I agree, I agree with their commentator, Abu Ghazali, he says okay. it's offensive to say God is love because if he loves, he has a sense of need mm -hmm. to love. Okay. Yes. Would it be fair to maybe say there's a difference in view in that for Christians we could possibly say with their two natures that man and God, those natures are not mutually exclusive. They just are not combined in our standard view. So we say I am not part of God. But in the same way someone could be 100% a football player, also 100% a basketball player. We can, we can use examples, but there, remember that God is above our imagination and out of time and space. There's nothing like God. Yeah, if thinking. God can be understood in our brain, then God is this big. And right. our God is way above that. No matter what examples you're giving, it's going to fall short. But what we need to go, usually I prefer that you go with God's word. Yes. Okay. Um. What I see in terms of like some of my interactions with Muslims is that um, biblically it makes sense. I mean, it is God's nature, but for Him to redeem fallen man, 
for son, or us and God's <coughs> children, where we have to, at least one of the strong arguments I found is how do Muslims deal with the problem of sin or original sin? Yeah. Because if we're separated from God because of the decision of Adam and Eve, I think Muslims have a different take on that. Yeah, they, they don't believe in original sin. Right. They believe that Adam fell and Allah right. forgive him. But that's Jesus. One of it, but his primary purpose is to defeat death, yeah. sin. Because without the without without the sin. shedding of yes. blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. Right. They do the sacrifice every year as a memory of the son of Abraham. Yes. We we disagree which son, but let's agree that he's Abraham's son. Uh, but they they do the sacrifice every year. And they say, I ask them why God ordered Abraham to kill his son. They would say testing his faith. And I ask them, did Abraham pass the test? They would say absolutely. I ask them why the sacrifice. They have no idea why Allah demanded the sacrifice. That why every, is it? Yeah, in Christianity, it is the shadow of Jesus, that he is the Lamb of God to take away the sin of the world. The Bible, 1,500 years of revelation, all talks about that man fell, falls into sin, and how God wants to bring us back to himself. The whole 1,500 years of revelation, 66 holy books, Revealed to more than 40 prophets in 1500 years in three different countries in three different languages all of it in agreement That is all pointing to Jesus Jesus said what Abraham saw my days and he rejoiced Abraham believed that Jesus is coming to die for our sins The whole book the whole Bible books God's revelation. This is not one book. It's not one book Against this book. No all God's revelation against this one book 66 books against this one book. The essential disagreement between them. All this and this. It's huge disagreement. Yeah. Do you, do you have time to go over the Islamic element? Sure. How many minutes do you have? Uh, you got like 12 until we have to okay. take a break. But then no you, problem. You can keep talking. Yeah, but I, I want to say that when it comes to manuscripts of the Bible, we have five, just in Greek alone, the New Testament, Greek alone, we have 5,800 manuscripts. The P52, is portion, a small part of the Gospel of John, is existed since 5 to 25 years after the death of the Apostle John. There's no book can come close to that has more evidence of its accuracy yeah. and how we can trust the Bible. There's no other book in the world that trustworthy more than God's word. Uh, now, when it comes to the Quran, uh, yeah, and, and also the inspiration of God's word is not Peter wrote something or John wrote something. No, they were what came uh, for prophecy came not in all time by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. The real author of this word, that's why there's no contradiction in it, is the Holy Spirit re leading his disciples or apostles or prophets to write God's word. That's why there's no contradictions in God's word. But when it comes to the Quran, according to Aisha, there's some verses being eaten by sheep. Sunan Ibn Majid is trustworthy, authentic Islamic books. In uh, Hadith number 1944, it says, a sheep ate these pages that are not longer in the Quran. Missing phrases. Away Ibn Kaab, he's one of the top four scholars, memorizers of the Quran, according to Muhammad himself. He said, if he forgot the Quran, go to this four. Away Ibn Kaab was one of them. And in his Quran, in this passage, in chapter 33, verse 6, he has an extra part uh, that is not found today, and he is the father of them. It's not found in the Quran today. Missing chapters. Abu Musa, one of Muhammad's disciples, he said, due to laziness, two chapters of the Quran are missing today. In the Hadith, we can find two chapters, Surah Al-Khala and Surah Al-Haft, it's not longer in the Quran, but and if it is not in the Quran, if it's not God's word, if Muslims want to reject it, they have another problem. Because Muhammad, he said, no one can write a book like the Quran. This is perfectly matching the rest of the Quran. If this is not the Quran, 
then someone met Muhammad challenge. He said, bring your witnesses. You are my witnesses here. This is another passage that matches the Quran. How many manuscripts we have for the Bible degree alone? 5,800 and even more now. When you go to the Quran, what? We have like around six manuscripts. Sorry guys, something wrong. But we have six manuscripts and none of them match the Hafs Quran, this Quran here. The Hafs Quran. None of them, this is majority of Muslims reading this Quran. None of these manuscripts match to the letter like what they claim. You wonder why I have different Qurans here. This is another Quran, different Arabic, not translation, original language, different Qurans. Watch, I have quite a few pages here talking about the differences between the two. If something pure, it has to be pure 100%. If I have a big huge barrel of pure water and I put one dot of blood in it, then it's not longer pure. If the Quran claims perfect, eternal, unchanged, and if there's differences, that's a problem. Like one of the differences, they are with their lords, and sorry, they are Abid al-Rahman, they are the slaves of their lords, and here they are with their lords. Which one is accurate? With their lords or the slaves of their lords? Another one here, missing word, he is missing in this other one. And there's a lot of examples I can give you more. Just real quick on that, I know you're up here pressed for time, but um, is there a few examples where some of those deviations create major doctrinal problems, like in the problems I know? Yeah, that's, uh, that's if it's the Bible, we can say that. We examples. cannot judge the Quran with the, with the Bible claim. The Quran claimed to be perfect, eternal, unchanged. OK, I get what you mean. Because I know yeah. like uh, like critical scholars like Bart Ehrman will like look, they'll will narrow in on like grammatical differences and just kind of wholesale throw the baby out with the bathwater or or it's some of the like there, there's variances that, in the Bible but it does not right. affect biblical it's theology. Doctrine. We we That's what we're yeah we go with the Quran when it comes to we based on its claims, not based on the biblical claims. Okay. If they claim it is perfect, eternal, unchanged, it. it has to be that. It's coming down from heaven. Right. It's not the same way that man, God inspired to man, and then people, right. humans, start making copies and right. make, they claim that it was the reason that Allah took charge over the Quran because the Jews did not do their part in the Bible, the Torah being corrupted, because the followers of David did not do their part in protecting the Psalms, because the followers of Jesus failed to protect their parts. That's why Allah now He took 100% charge and said, No one can change my Quran. But is it? Right? Is it true? I have no idea what happened here. Okay. Uh, but anyway, even even if uh, now I I don't see the Quran as eternal, unchanged, and all this stuff. <laughs> Sorry, I, I shouldn't put that picture there because maybe you can be offended, offensive to someone, but uh, because sheep ate the Quran, part of the Quran, but uh, the manuscripts, none of them goes at the time of Muhammad and none of them matches what they have today. I would love to see a manuscript that matching exactly like what this, the Hafs Quran that they, they're claiming it's. And by the way, the Hafs in the Cairo, Cairo what? Cairo edition. Cairo edition in 19, 24, 100 years old now, since the last correction in the Quran that they use all across the world, they correct it again in 1924, that's 100 years ago. Uh, can I explain that real quick? Sure. So, uh, in the Ottoman Empire, 1924, you have standardized tests going on in some of the schools, and the students are giving different answers to the same questions because there's different recitation traditions in the Quran, and so, they're actually giving different answers because of the traditions that they're taught. And so the empire at that point is like, well, the only way that we can really solve this problem is to standardize one recitation. And so they pick Hops for whatever reason, I don't know exactly. Um, 1924, they standardized that one, started printing it in mass, and dumped a whole bunch of the other ones in the Nile. 
and then nowadays 95% of the Muslim world uses the Hasbro. Just 100 years ago. But this is two, two Turkish scholars. They looked at the manuscripts I showed you and they came with the conclusion that none of these Qur'ans are Osmanic. Why is called Osmanic? It's from the word Osman. The third successor is the one collected the Qur'an and put it together. Yes, sir. Yeah, Arabic. Now. Uh, I, I, do, I do read some of your books, yes. Right, so, so you will know the 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 and the He asked, he telling me that I, uh, do I recognize the differences between the different readings? Uh, all my life, I've been, to, I've been told it's a different accent, a different accent. But when we start looking at it, we came with uh, there's a documents that I would be more than happy to provide to everyone here in the room, and I can email you one in more details. Twenty something thousand differences between them. It's not an accent. It's not like the different Arabic from Egypt uh, to Egypt, the Arabic in Iraq or something. No, that's not the case. There's different words. Abid, Abid or Bihim, and Endor or Bihim. With our wisdom lords or slaves of the lords, which one is a different word? If it's coming down from heaven, it should be the same. Right, it should not then, be different. Right, right. It says sabah roof, sah. Right. Yeah. Sabah. I have. You say seven yeah. different. The Muhammad says the Quran was revealed in seven different ways. Uh, earlier, I, ha I don't have it here. I have it in the car. I'll be more than happy. It called al qiraat al ashara. Yeah. Ten readings. They added from seven become ten. But when you open any page in the bottom, it will show you 10 of Muhammad's students, and under each one, his students. His students also start making different Qurans. They become 23 Qurans in no time. And now our team collected 37 different Arabic, not seven, he said seven letters, but 10 readings. Then now we have 37, and I have a list. I don't, we're still trying to collect them. 86 different Arabic Qurans we're trying to collect. We have the list of them. Also, I have a book here called Kitab al-Masahif. Kitab al-Masahif, Mus'haf in Quran, the book of the Qurans, this book is called. This is Qurans that the first successor, Usman, when he collected, he took upon himself the charge of collecting and creating the Quran. He find witnesses and checking, making sure there's enough witnesses to say this is God's word or not. He ordered the burning of many other Qurans that disagree with his. And this, some of them, like Ubayy ibn Ka'ab, a few minutes ago I talked to you about, Muhammad, he said, if you forgot the Qur'an, go to him. And guess what Ubayy ibn Ka'ab said? Hid, hid the Qur'ans you have from you, and you, with you from Osman, because he cannot burn them. And I would like to end with one video clip, is it, is it fine? Uh, about that subject, and please don't look at the video as uh, just a video. No, there's references in the screen. Write them down and you can search this because if your life, your eternity determined on this. And you know what? I love my Muslim friends. Our similarities, we can talk about it all day long, but it's not going to change anything. Our differences will determine heaven or hell. Our differences is what we need to discuss if I care about them, I need to tell them. And if they care about me, they need to tell me about Islam. We do need to discuss our differences with respect. We do encourage that. We love our Muslim friends. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, but I would like to finish this section with uh, one video clip. And uh, it's very, very powerful stuff. And it is on our website. You can watch it anytime you want. This is our homepage, ministrytomuslims.com.
are filled with valuable information. Here, let me randomly pick one and open to a random page. Uthman sent to every Muslim province one copy of what they had copied and ordered that all the other Quranic materials, whether written in fragmentary manuscripts or old copies, be burnt. Let me see that. Uthman ordered that all other Quranic materials be burnt. So there's already been a burn the Quran day. But why would be? I don't know, David. Perhaps one of these other books that are filled with valuable information can help. It's a good thing you didn't burn them. Let's take a look at one at random. Oh, here's one. Sahih Muslim. Abu Musa al-Ashari sent for the reciters of Basra. They came to him and they were 300 in number. They recited the Quran and he said, You are the best among the inhabitants of Basra, for you are the reciters among them. So continue to recite it. But bear in mind that your reciting for a long time may not harden your hearts, as were hardened the hearts. The words here in the bottom it says Sahih. Sahih means authentic. We don't use anything except Sahih. Of those before you. Wow! It says they had their hearts hard. Well, what happened next? Let's keep reading and find out. We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah Barat. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this, which I remember out of it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. And we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of Musabihat, and I have forgotten it. So this is saying that two chapters of the Quran are missing because Muslims forgot them. Let me see that. You're right. This is saying that two entire chapters are missing because Muslims forgot them. Hey, Nabil, look at this. Ubay was the best of us in the recitation of the Quran, yet we leave some of what he recites. Ubay says, I have taken it from the mouth of Allah's messenger and will not leave it for anything whatever. Wasn't Obay the best reciter of the Quran? Yes! And wasn't he one of the best four teachers of the Quran? Yes! But he says stuff in his Quran that is not in this Quran. Let me pick a random verse from this Quran and read it. Ah, Surah 33, verse 6. The prophet is closer to the believers than their own selves, and his wives are their mothers. Oh look, here's a point out. In some Qiras, like that of Obay ibn Kaab, occur also the words, and he is a father of her. So Ubay, one of Muhammad's top teachers of the Quran, had words in his Quran that aren't in this Quran. But was he the top teacher of the Quran? Surely Zayn ibn Thabit, who put together the Quran we have today, was Muhammad's top Quran expert. Well, actually, Ibn Masood was the first name that Muhammad mentioned when it came to learning the Qur'an. You know, surely one of these books would have something about him. Oh, look, here it is. I heard the Prophet saying, learn the Qur'an from four. Abdullah ibn Masood, Salim, Mu'ad, and Ubay bin Ka. I wonder what Muhammad's top teacher of the Qur'an has to say about it. Let me pick up another one of these books at random. Here's one. The people have been guilty of deceit in the reading of the Quran. I like it better to read according to the recitation of him whom I love, more than that of Zayd ibn Thabit. Wow, according to that book you're holding, Muhammad's top teacher of the Quran is saying reading today's Quran is like being guilty of deceit. I wonder if any of these other books have something to say about it. Here, let me look at this one. Oh, there it is. Oh, you Muslim people. Avoid copying the Mus'haf and recitation of Zayd bin Thabit. By Allah, when I accepted Islam, he was but in the loins of a disbelieving man. And it was regarding this that Abdullah bin Masood said, O people of Al Iraq, keep the Masahib that are with you and conceal them. So Muhammad's top teacher of the Quran says that today's version is deceptive and that we should avoid copying and reading it. But how confused, Nabil. Muslims have always told me that the Quran has been perfectly preserved right down to the letter and that the evidence proves this. That, that, that's what I was always taught. I'm sure one of these books will tell us the Quran was perfectly preserved. 
out of that one. Let's see. It was narrated that Aisha said, the verse of stoning and of breastfeeding an adult ten times was revealed, and the paper was with me under my pillow. When the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came in and ate it? The verse of stoning and the verse of breastfeeding? David, are these verses in the Quran? No! Then why not? Because Aisha's sheep ate them! David, we should read all these books and get to the bottom of this. <clears throat> so let me see if I've got this right. Muhammad died, and no one had compiled the Quran. The people who had memorized large sections of the Quran were sent into battle by Abu Bakr, and they were slaughtered. Muslims lost a ton of the Quran that day. Abu Bakr didn't want to lose any more, and so he had Zayd ibn Thabit put together what was left and compiled it into a manuscript. And soon thereafter, people started compiling their own manuscripts, and large disputes began to happen over what should be included in the Quran. Ibn Masud had only 111 chapters in his Quran, while Ubay ibn Kaab had 116 chapters. And Zayd, who, who compiled today's Quran, only had 114 chapters. According to Muslim sources, entire chapters of the Quran were lost. Large sections of chapters have been lost. Individual verses have been lost. And in the end, Uthman put together what he could, put out his own official version of the Quran, and burned all of the evidence. Wow. Sure, I'm glad that no one burned this evidence. Nabil, let's agree that we're never going to burn any book, no matter how much we disagree with it. We love our Muslim friends, and I encourage each one of you in the room, in the room here, please build friendship with Muslims. They are wonderful people. I was born among them. They are kind. They are loving. Our problem is not with the Muslims. Our problem is this book, the Quran. That's what. I'm, remember that always. And but as Muslims and as Christians, our we believe there's God exists, and we believe there's a day of judgment. Our most important question: Where are we going to spend eternity? And let's discuss our differences. Amen? Thank you so much. Can we just show the five minutes video, the Islamic dilemma? Yeah. Oh, let me go in there if anyone has a question about it. Yes, that'd be great. That'd be really great. We should sit down. That's okay. That's fine. That's fine. Those are good questions. Thank you. In Surah 29, verse 46, the Quran commands Muslims to say to Christians, We believe in what has been revealed to us and in what has been revealed to you. Our God and your God is one, and to Him we submit. Yet many Muslims say something very different to Christians. They say, We don't believe in your book because it's been corrupted, and your God is a false God. If Muslims are commanded to say that they believe in what has been revealed to us, why do they instead say that they don't believe in the Bible, the only revelation we have? And if they're commanded to say that our God and their God is one, why do they instead say that our God is a false God? According to the Bible, God is a trinity, one in nature or essence, but three in person, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Son entered creation as Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus died on the cross for sins and rose from the dead. The Quran denies all of this, so a Muslim can't say that he believes in the Bible or that Allah and the God of the Bible are the same God. Muslims have to reject the Bible because the Bible contradicts the Quran. But Muslims have a problem here. The Quran declares that the Torah and the Gospel were revealed by Allah. Surah 3 verses 3 through 4. He has revealed to you the book with truth, verifying that which is before it, 
and he revealed the Torah and the Gospel aforetime, a guidance for the people, and he sent the Quran. So Allah revealed the Torah and the Gospel as a guidance. But our Muslim friends tell us that Allah couldn't protect the Torah and the Gospel, and that both revelations were corrupted by men. What Allah sent to guide people ended up misguiding people, convincing Christians that God is a trinity and that Jesus died on the cross for sins. Of course, we should be puzzled when Muslims tell us that the Torah and the Gospel were changed, because the Quran states that no one can change Allah's words. Surah 18, verse 27. And recite what has been revealed to you of the book of your Lord. There is none who can change his words and you shall not find any refuge besides him. Here, our Muslim friends might say, this verse only means that no one can change the Quran. But the verse doesn't say that no one can change the Quran. It says that no one can change Allah's words. And the Torah and the Gospel, according to the Quran, are Allah's words. Despite Allah's clear declaration that no one can change his words, Many Muslims assert that the Gospel was corrupted by the Apostle Paul or by later Christians. If the Gospel is corrupted, we can only wonder why the Quran says that Christians still had the Gospel during the time of Muhammad. Surah 7, verse 157. Those who follow the Messenger, the unlettered prophet, whom they find mentioned in their own scriptures, in the Torah and the Gospel, it is they who will prosper. How could Christians find Muhammad mentioned in the Gospel when the Gospel was supposedly corrupted centuries earlier? Is Allah saying that we find Muhammad mentioned in our corrupted scriptures? But we don't find Muhammad mentioned in our scriptures at all, except as part of a general warning about false prophets who come to lead people away from the Gospel. And if we did find Muhammad mentioned in our scriptures, how would we know that this wasn't one of the corrupted parts? And since our scriptures contradict Islam, why would Allah appeal to them as evidence for Islam? But Allah goes much further than this. He commands Christians to judge by the Gospel. Surah 5, verse 47. Let the people of the Gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. If any do fail to judge by the light of what Allah hath revealed, they are no better than those who rebel. <laughs> Why does Allah command us to judge by a corrupt book? The only gospel we have contradicts Islam, so in order to obey Allah's command, we would have to judge by the gospel and conclude that Islam is false. Allah continues along these same lines in Surah 5, verse 68. Say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the Torah, the Gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Why would Allah tell us that we have no ground to stand upon unless we stand upon a corrupt book? If the Gospel has been corrupted, wouldn't Allah just tell us to get rid of it and believe in the Quran? So the Quran clearly maintains that the Gospel is authoritative for Christians, and this only makes sense if the author of the Quran believed that Christians have the Word of God. But the Gospel wasn't just authoritative for Christians, it was also authoritative for Muhammad himself, and therefore, for Muslims. One day, Muhammad started having doubts about his revelations. In response to these doubts, Allah commanded Muhammad to go to the people of the book, Jews and Christians, for confirmation. Surah 10, verse 94. But if you, O Muhammad, are in doubt as to what we have revealed to you, ask those who read the book before you. Certainly the truth has come to you from your Lord, therefore you should not be of the disputers. Muslims today act as if the Quran stands in judgment over the Bible. Since the Bible contradicts the Quran, Muslims assume that the Bible must be rejected. But in the Quran, it's exactly the opposite. The Bible stands in judgment over the Quran, and Muhammad himself 
could only confirm his revelations by checking to see if they line up with the scriptures of the people of the book. Since Muhammad continued preaching Islam, he apparently never took this test very seriously. If he had gone to the people of the book in search of confirmation, he would have been forced to reject the Quran because the Quran puts Muslims in an inescapable dilemma. Either Christians have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, or we don't. Those are the only two possibilities. If we have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because Islam contradicts what we have. If we don't have the inspired, preserved, authoritative word of God, Islam is false because the Quran affirms the inspiration, preservation, and authority of our book. So if the gospel is the word of God, Islam is false. If the gospel isn't the word of God, Islam is false. Either way, Islam is false. By affirming scriptures that contradict its core teachings, Islam self-destructs. Muslims who don't want to believe in a religion that self-destructs will therefore need to find a new religion. Let's encourage our Muslim friends to obey the gospel as both of our religions command. website uh, ministry to muslims.com uh, we are live also every sunday at 7 p.m as well any question uh, since we started the talk you said that muslims have no guarantee of uh, paradise or eternal have to be eternity with the god yeah but christians do um where do you where do you get that part that muslims don't have that guarantee from god uh, in Islam, there was 10 people promised paradise, it's called Mubashari bin Jannah. 10 people were promised paradise. Uh, they asked Muhammad about the names of those people being promised paradise. He gave them one name at a time. And then, after the night, they asked him, who is number 10? He said, it is I. He was number 10. But when we look at the first person was promised paradise, he was, his name is Abu Bakr, he was the first successor after Muhammad died, he became the first successor. He was also Muhammad's father-in-law, he was the father of Aisha, she was uh, eight, nine years old when Muhammad married her, and he also was the first to become Muslim voluntarily, not a slave, not uh, anyone else. Uh, he was, according to Sunnis, they want him to be the successor because he's more knowledgeable in Islam and, and one of the best Muslims. When he was dying, uh, he was very troubled. And they told him, why? You're being promised paradise. What do you worry about? And uh, he referred to chapter 3, verse 54 of the Quran, where I said, I read earlier, they deceive and Allah deceive and Allah the best of all deceiver. And he said this, if one of my feet in heaven and one out of heaven, I will not trust the deception of Allah. is ahda qadamaya dakhil al-jannah wa ahda makharij al-jannah la'a min al-makr Allah. And that's found in the book called the Khulafa al-Rashidin, the great successors. Uh, in page number 99 by Muhammad Khalid, Muhammad Khalid, page 99 in English, but in the Arabic one in page number 66. Um, is what you bought it is in saying the leaf from there? Uh, Khalid, Muhammad Khalid, is, uh, his book, the Khulafa al-Rashidin, I bought it from Islamic bookstore in Anaheim, California, called Jari Bookstore. It's a very trusted Islamic book. Uh, in this book, they take me stuff from different hadiths. I, I, there's um, six authentic hadiths, for so, example. Yeah. Hadith Bukhari, Hadith Muslim. Not six, six, two, actually, yeah. In Hadith Bukhari, for example, is nine volumes. Hadith uh, uh, Muslim, it can be six volumes. It's based on what publisher Dar es Salaam and others. They, sometimes they make it in different volumes. But if I, I can't read all these books, but there's books that collecting from these books, put it like, like for example, Kitab al Masahif, it's a collection from different hadiths from different places, they put it in the book. Um, I think you didn't answer my question. My yeah. question was, what you quoted, is it mentioned in any same hadiths or not? Yeah, there's no, there's no, I think, are you a Muslim? Yes. Can you guarantee heaven? Yeah, uh, to whom? Can you guarantee going to heaven right now, if you die? Myself? Yeah. Uh, yes. 
Uh, you, you are amazing. I never seen any Muslim saying that before. Right. Because even Muhammad himself, he came to attend a funeral. Mm -hmm. That's in Hadith Bukhari. Um, this just, he this came to attend a funeral. You didn't answer the question. Yeah, this is, this is exactly uh -huh. why they don't guarantee heaven. He went to this lady. She was taking care of this man that he just died. He just died because of old age. When Muhammad came walking to the house, she said, by Allah, I am a witness that Allah has honored this person just died. Mm -hmm. And what did, she, what did Muhammad say? He said, wait a minute. How do you know Allah has honored him? Mm -hmm. I am the apostle of Allah, and yet I don't know what Allah will do to me. Yes. He said, I cannot guarantee, even myself I cannot guarantee. Now here I see a greater than Muhammad, <laughs> you no, guarantee no, no, heaven. No, no. I didn't say that. Um, you don't guarantee when heaven? You, when you say that, are you like are you guaranteed or not? The my answer was yes because it's about the principle. If you follow that thing, if you follow, if you believe in one thing, are you sure you're gonna follow all the way to the end? I I believe in one God. I believe in the things. Satan that, believed there's God according to the Bible. Uh, Satan believed there's God and he um, in Sha'ari it means he shakes one. Let me let me come back to God. Let me come back to God. Sure. Um, if you can, if you ask me uh, about something that I cannot know, it is out of my knowledge. I cannot claim that, right? The 10 people that you said, those are the people who profit, God have, profit didn't know if they go to heaven or not. Go to them, because God knows the future. I think you also believe that. But he did not trust Allah because Allah is the best of all deceivers according to the Quran. And he used that same word. If one of my feet inside heaven and one is not in heaven, yet not both of, not completely I'm in heaven, I will not trust the deception of Allah. He was referring to chapter 3, verse 54. What's the authenticity of this thing that you're saying? It, it, is, it, is, it is and think is, is in Islam. Is yes, and even Muhammad himself, he was promised paradise, he was number 10, right? He said, even though I am the apostle of Allah, I don't know what Allah will do to me. Muhammad, was he lying or was he? No, 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 he, he actually didn't know. He did not know. Okay, good. So can I just uh, part of information? So when he say, mentioned that uh, he's, he has a guarantee. So in the Quran, you know that maybe that if you do have a point, just a dust, yeah, amount of belief about God, Eventually, you will go to yes. Riyadh and you will go to the Jannah and you will get that uh, reward. You there, know that one. So There's a verse in the Quran it says, Man minkum illa wa waridaha. Every single Muslim is going to go through hell. Every Muslim is going to go through hell. Mm -hmm. There's a sword, according to the hadith and commentary, there is a, a bridge like a sword between here, going over hell to the other side. They're going to go, some of them slowly, some of them fast, based on your good deed and not good deed and all that stuff. To you, you're going to be paying for your sin and then go to the other side. But yeah. that can you guarantee there's absolutely, there, there is some hadith, there's some hadith, if you die for the sake of Allah, killing others for Allah, you may guarantee that heaven. But uh, there's no, really, if it, it comes down, is Allah the best of all deceivers or not? Let me tell you guys the background about that verse. They deceive and Allah deceive and Allah the best of all deceivers. This is written, who they deceive? The Jews were planning to kill Jesus, but Allah tricked them by taking Jesus and putting someone else on that cross. Not just the Jews, the enemy of Jesus, were tricked, but even the best disciples of Jesus were tricked. That's why the entire Christian faith is started, that we think that Jesus died on the cross because Allah took Jesus and put someone else on that cross, and we did not. For 2,000 years, Christians, even the disciples of Jesus, they were, Paul, Peter was what, crucified upside down? Uh, Paul was beheaded, oh, every one of them was killed, even John, he was not killed directly, but he was boiled in hot oil because he refused to deny that Jesus died and rose from the dead and who Jesus is. All this because he did not know that Allah took Jesus and put someone else on the cross. Every Christian in this room and in the whole country and the whole world and through centuries millions and billions of Christians believe that Jesus died on the cross because Allah made it look like Jesus died on the cross. If the crucifixion is a lie, if I ask my Muslim friends, is it from God or Satan, they will say from, from God. Some of them they say from Satan without knowing. But the Quran, this is Allah deceived us to think that Jesus died on the cross. 
Jesus was born as a Muslim. He preached Islam all his life. Jesus came as a guidance to mankind according to the Quran. But Allah mismanaged it. Because by mistake, he came sending Jesus as a guidance, ended misguiding, and is starting the largest false religion in the world. Is this really what you want me to believe? If he deceived the best followers of his prophet Jesus, how do you know you don't, he doesn't believe you? If the disciples of Jesus trusted their eyes and saw what they saw in front of them, and they were tricked, who told you how that? can you believe the who, pain? Who told you that the disciples saw it? This, all this happened. So that, that's the, the out result of what happening. All of us we believe because of this. The history tell us. History very, tell us. History. history and even people not Christians wrote about the Josephus and others. They talked about Jesus being crucified. History, not right, non Christians right, yeah. talked about Jesus. So I have this we have a debate in the UK with Sami Zakari. And you guess what Sami Zakari does to us the first time ever he admitted that Allah deceived us. Every evidence we brought in that debate about Jesus being crucified, he say Allah gave you that evidence to deceive you. Thank you so much. So is, is in the gospel, so there is a story about the resurrection and how it's happened. Yeah. So all the gospels, do the, all the, I mean, who saw that the scenario, all them agree what happened. Yeah. So agree means, for example, I see. Uh, I mean, if I'm not uh, wrong, does someone say that he was uh, he was doubting? Okay, yeah, something, some doubt. Th Thomas maybe. was doubting because I he mean, was not there. He was doubting if Jesus rose from the dead. But once he touched Jesus, I mean, he knew. And, and also the how they look at the uh, Jesus at that time. So there is some some say that there is some. Uh, he was so tired, and someone said he was okay. Something like that. So all of the. Uh, all of the observer at the time. The before, the before, yeah. before he the was gospel. crucified, he was crying I mean, and he was gospel. bleeding and stuff like that. But does not mean he. I mean, according to the gospel, uh -huh. all the story they say because different version. There is a different version of the gospel, and they have different according to their own observation. So all of them agree the same story, or it's something a little bit maybe 1920. No. <laughs> no. I'm well, just wondering. Is, is any of you have is a, a Bible with you? Can you read from your phone Isaiah? Chapter 53 on the crucifixion. That's a thousand so years. Maybe a thousand years. All of the Jews don't agree with your interpretation of that. But guess what? Guess uh, what? Yeah. You, if you read it, I, I have read it. I have a friend of mine. He read it to his Jewish father-in-law, uh -huh. and his father-in-law gets what to say. So why you? You know I'm a Jewish. Why are you reading from the New Testament? About he did not even know it is written in Isaiah. I can speak. This is your book. I can, speak, book. On the, I can speak on at least the Jewish part. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking just because you, I know you handled this question before, on um, the correspondence of the Gospels yeah. and how they interconnect. You know, <coughs> it's, it's really, I'll let you articulate that piece. On the Jewish piece, um, it's really a mixed bag, but the reality is that if they actually do careful study, I've talked to rabbis about this, they have entirely different interpretations for how they handle Messianic prophecy. Yeah. And it's actually, the, the reason why a lot of them are stuck, and I think the ones that are well-intentioned will read, Psalm 22, Isaiah 53, even Genesis 3, we see the, uh, the Proto-Evangelium, you'll see essentially the very first prophetic or messianic uh, prophecy given in at, at the fall. Now, I think Muslims have a different take on, on, on how that happened in the garden. But the point is, is that uh, it's really a matter of interpretation, but they don't, if they, if they don't accept the person of Christ, the testimony about Christ, what we call the New Testimony, the whole body of literature, they're written by Jewish people. These were Jewish people, Jewish men and women, that are reporting to see their rabbi, who, now some people at the time thought, well maybe this is like a prophet like Elijah. Maybe this is like another prophet, like some, maybe well-meaning Muslims might think, hey, Jesus was just another prophet, but the thing is, Jesus' own words say, there's no one coming after me. I am the only way. If, if he was saying there's going to be someone after me like Muhammad, he would have said that because it predates the Quran. So um, Jews will say, Jews don't even look at their own prophetic literature. They have different interpretations for uh, how you know uh, end times are going to happen. They still <coughs> actually are waiting for God to, to come. No, the side the come. But, here's, but here's, what's, here's what's funny to me. And just, just, just think about this. Like, they're waiting on the side to come. Even the, this is what's reported, right? It's, it's not just the healings and the miracles. It's demons getting cast out. But well, we see instances where these demons are like, what are you doing on earth, son of man? 
before the time. And so even in the supernatural realm, these entities are like, and, and they're obviously like speaking through human beings. If you don't believe that, like you can talk to people that practice witchcraft and, and various mm -hmm. religious things. I'll give you all kinds of experiences. But the point is, is that even in the supernatural realm, the, 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 the demon possessed people, which are the dispossessed spirits of the people in that place, all their conversation. But they're surprised because they understood that when Messiah comes to finally deal judgment on the earth, the second coming, it's going to be total. So what we see is we see kind of God, he, he does fulfill parts of the prophetic messianic <coughs> scripture, but he's also going to fulfill the rest of it. Which, what's funny is you're waiting for a Mahdi. Right, you're waiting for um, is it a is that what it's called? Is it a is not a Mahdi. Okay, but, see, but, but everybody's kind of waiting for this. Uh, I think that's. And you ask for the I want to say two things. I think that also waiting for the second coming of Jesus, by the way. So yeah. So okay. I, I wanted to answer two of the questions. So the first question was. Um, the correspondence. Like we were saying, well, I'll, I'll get to that in yeah. a second. The first thing goes. Uh, Jews don't agree with your interpretation of this Old Testament verse that shows that Jesus is the Messiah. Um, well, of course they don't. If they did, then they wouldn't be Jews, they would be Christians, right? So it's kind of like saying, like, you know, not every, like... A lot uh, of them agreed, though, that's why they became Christians. Yeah, yeah, so we do have Messianic Jews who are, like, culturally or ethnically Jewish, but religiously Christian. Christian. Yeah. yeah, so that's the first part. The second part um, is, like, I think you were asking. I, don't, I, don't, I didn't catch your name. Sahih. Sahih. That, Sahih. That doesn't answer my question, but you can pass on to that. Your yeah, question's like a salvation issue. Like, how do you have a guarantee that you're going to be with Yeah, oh yeah, here. Yeah. Yeah. I think he's going to that. I just want to uh, show you I just want to say that the interpretation of that, those verses matter. And you have one interpretation, and there's another interpretation. That that's going to answer that. He's going to answer that. Yeah, he, he, I, I want to show you that the, the reference you were asking for is Sahih Muslim. It's a reliable second, most reliable hadith after Bukhari. He says, this is the story I was just saying about the woman taking care of uh, someone dying, and he said, I am the apostle of Allah, and yet I did not know what Allah would do to me. Yeah. The, but there's some places else, Muhammad said that Allah forgives his sins. The best way is to meet the reality, and I want you to I, hold I, on just I, I didn't ask you to show me that. I asked you to show you the other thing that you were saying about Muhammad did not guarantee heaven. He was Muslim, <coughs> promised paradise, and did not guarantee. Then how anyone else would guarantee? If Muhammad himself did not guarantee. He said he used to pray 70 times a day for forgiveness of sin, and still think, he had no guarantee to be in heaven. 70 uh, times a day he I think there's a difference between the definition of promise by you and by me. We need to talk more about that. But yeah. Uh, and to, to know exactly, because there's a lot of the Quran that's filled with Nasik or Masuk, abrogation, contradiction, it's filled with that. Yeah. To know and the Quran final to that. know yeah. the final saying what happened to Muhammad, the best thing I encourage you to examine the death of the Prophet of Islam, how he died. That's the most there's a video how Muhammad was killed. But how, but how I, I, I don't I don't want you to listen to them. <laughs> I want you, every time they mention a Quran verse, write it down. They mention a hadith, write it down. And go and search. Is this true? Don't worry about what David would say. Don't worry about anyone else in the video saying, go and examine. Is this true? Is this really what the hadith says? I don't get your point. Uh, the, examine the death of Muhammad. It will get you the fact right. that where Muhammad ended. Yeah. Where Muhammad ended in the I end. I have read those hadiths, but I don't How did he was killed? How? How what? was he killed? Who? How was he Muhammad. killed? Muhammad. He died in his home. In his home. A, a result of what? Uh, he suffered for a long time, but about from what? Well, uh, a poison, right? Yeah, I mean that's part a of Jewish it. A Jewish woman. That's part of it, yeah. Yeah, but when you study Muhammad's death, how he died, you were, for example, you're saying Jesus did not die. Why? Because Allah is saying, how dare you are to lie, trying to kill my prophet. I'm not going to allow you to kill him. I'm going to take him and put someone else. But he allowed Muhammad to be no, all killed. Prophets, all prophets die. No prophets are going to live forever, right? But killed. Prophets? A lot so, of prophets so, have been killed. killed. Okay. Yeah, it's not like prophets can I encourage you. Search. Okay. Who killed I, Muhammad? I didn't get the point why you even brought that up. I didn't get that because point. Because there, there's here say he did not, he, he cannot guarantee heaven. There's other places contradict that as well in the Quran. I want to be faithful to the text. There's other places showing that Muhammad know he's gonna to go to heaven, 
there's contradiction. To examine, to know exactly if he ended in heaven or hell, or what is the final thing, you have to examine his death, the last days of his life. And you will know exactly if he guaranteed, he got what he guaranteed or not. I mean, I don't want him to guarantee me the paradise. I just need to follow the rules and what I need to do. So then God will guarantee if the principal, I don't want the if the principal prophet, if, if the principal prophet who is giving, dictating the revelation from God, from God, is not even secure in his salvation, in his entrance into paradise. That is substantial. The one who should be the model. Of the one who should be the behavior. model. Like so, if if you're if the if the most ideal Muslim does not. From at least how we approach yeah, the text, yeah, yeah. I does not I even you. cannot yeah. even guarantee cannot even guarantee you <coughs> that you uh, that you no 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 all I can do right but all, all I can do every once but like uh -huh. are you better than Muhammad? I am not. Okay, so if Muhammad does not know that he has peace with God, uh -huh. no, that's not. But uh, that's what the text is saying. No, that's not what the text is. That saying. text says it right there. It that's says, "I am the Apostle of Allah, and yet I didn't know what it Allah says, would do to me." Right, this, yeah, this, 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 he can use the word for. Like, no, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. So let me let me say this like this. Okay. okay. <laughs> you said earlier, your lips. You. I, I'm not being. I'm not being like. I'm, I'm I not judging. I'm just saying. saying yeah, I want to yeah. make sure that we're speaking the same yes. language. You said that you had a guarantee mm -hmm. that you were going to be with Allah when you die. You said that. Don't. No. 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 Yes. You said that. Mm -hmm. But Muhammad mm -hmm. does not. Mm -hmm. Or how do you have a guarantee? You said because you. I follow the rules as best I can, and I have. I think the key is this. This is the key component. I have faith not that I'm going to live under all the rules because I'm going to blow it. Now, with the Holy Spirit's help, I believe I'm going to live more righteously, progressively. But that's not the point. The point is I have faith that Jesus never sinned and that he, what he claimed, is from God. So I put my faith in him, in his perfect record of sinless perfection, guaranteed his blood, his sacrifice. This is a covenant. This is how things were done for thousands of years, even, even in Islamic and, 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 I put my faith in him. I don't put my faith in him. Right, but it's like, I would put my faith in anyone that hasn't lived sinlessly and perfectly. Now, it's not just, you know, it's not just a righteous Jewish person. It's This has been prophesied before Christ even came. Thousands of Thousands of years, so it's it's more substantial, but also it's relevatory. I don't just know. I started with just I'm going to search for truth. I'm going to do the same thing I would do in any other religion or philosophy. I'm going to find the nuggets, but I also have to realize the truth stands on its own because the truth that's unique about Christianity is the truth is ultimately encompassed in the person of Christ, which is the Word. It's the Word made manifest. It's the Word. It's the revelation, the truth that's internal that can supernaturally dwell within a human being as a vessel to come in the world. And you know what? That same work can dwell within you. That same spirit of God can dwell within you. And that can give you peace with God. But you can't, can't do it just by following good deeds like that. Said you. Right, fine. But, but I ask, right. does that make sense? So you have faith that you're going to be right mm -hmm. in right standing with Allah. Right. But if Muhammad did not have faith, mm -hmm. do you have greater faith than Muhammad? No. Then that's the contradiction. Yes, let me explain that. Okay, yeah. explain that. So there's a different idea of salvation in Christian than in Islam. Sure. In Islam, is that um, you can never say that I am going to go to heaven unless God tells you. To. So how do you know God told you? God did, right? What I'm saying is that when I say I am guaranteed to go to heaven, is that if I die believing in the right stuff, then I'm guaranteed heaven. That's the promise of God. God does not promise that you unconditionally are going to heaven. For example, if you today say that I don't believe in Christ anymore, mm -hmm. do you think that you still go to heaven? No. Right? So that's traditional. Similarly, in Islam, if I believe in one true God, if I start saying that, okay, I believe in three gods or like five gods, I will not go to heaven because then I'm going to check. Right. But if I die on the right belief, mm -hmm. then I am guaranteed from uh, the heaven. But what's the source of your faith? Is it is it based on the text? 
Yes. Right. There are multiple. Okay. Words so if the text is found to be contradictory, how can we have confidence that that what your belief is actually saying is true? Um, you're right. Then it would be very doubtful if you find any contradiction about that. Right. If you show me uh, something in the Quran that says that even if you believe in the right thing, even if you believe in true right. God, you will not go to heaven, or you might not go to heaven. I then get it now. Uh, so the, the, the whole point is that these are just rules, guidelines. Believe, well, believe. Belief. But the thing is, is that the Bible doesn't. The Bible says this is I'm, I'm, I'm authoritative. About, right. about my I'm saying, like, why I said okay. that. Uh, what I, I, said. I, I get what you mean now. So, uh, so that was not actually a contradiction. That was the difference right. in the understanding. But, but it, is, it is a claim. Because so, you, you right. also said that because you put your faith in Christ, that's right. why you're promised to heaven. Right. right. But if you stop believing in Christ, then right. you are not promised. Right. But right. I also so, know that if you're born again, that's the same thing. If, if you're born again, your belief is secure. Whereas it sounds like you're not secure in your faith, you're secure in your belief. Jesus say no one can take you belief from my hand. Belief is the same yes. as faith. Uh, well, what's the source of your faith? You said the source of your faith is the Quran. Yes. And I would say that the source of my faith is Christ. Right. Who is God. Right. But how does Christ, how, why do I have confidence in that? It's because, and I, and I could bring up all the evidence, mm -hmm. but because it's a revelation that you get, you become born again. Mm -hmm. It's a supernatural revelation. Now, it's difficult to explain that, mm -hmm. but it is a gift of God. Mm -hmm. And that's why it could seem haughty or arrogant for some Christians to say, well, I know. That's actually right. arrogance, yeah. And not, my brother says the same know. thing, because he says, I know I have peace with Allah, because I had these experiences. But what I say is, what's the source of that experience. How do you have a guarantee that's not just Actually, consistent for you, but for every other being in the cosmos? I think this is not something that Muslims and Christians differ in, because I asked you the same question. Mm -hmm. If you stop believing in God, mm -hmm. would you go to heaven or not? You said no. Well, right. so I would say is it. I we have the same belief. Like if we sure. stop believing in one true God, right. we will not go to heaven. We don't that's believe the there's a scale, they're going to each one bad deed will be over. Before that, the next person starts, yeah. But I, I would say though that the difference between my belief and your belief is the ultimate person or the truth of which you and I believe. Sure. So a, a, good, a, a great way to explain this is that I put my faith in Christ and he's made me a new creation. He's born me again in the spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead which is equal to Christ. And, and, it, and it can be a little confusing. Mm -hmm. But even when I doubt, even when I've been in, brother, I've been in some situations where I've been here denied because I've been angry, because I've been hurt, like all of us go through trials. Mm -hmm. But I still have faith in Him. And that's the difference. If, if, I, if I say, you know what, I don't believe Him anymore, then I think my life, and some people would argue there's different interpretations. Some people think that you can never deny once, you, once you've been born again. Other people, people say you can. Say right. they were not I still think it here. comes down to is my confidence in Christ mm. is great, and it's just me. That's a greater. I have greater trust in Christ mm -hmm. than I do in my belief in the text. Although my faith is actually rooted significantly in the text, I don't think you, you can have one without the other. But, the text but, text but text. some Muslims, and, and I would say people all over the world have encounters with Christ without ever reading the text. There is a story, I was explaining this, there is a man being crucified next to Christ that never read, but we don't know, maybe he did read this text, but he had faith in Jesus, not in faith that if I live rightly under God. I'm not rejecting your yeah. experiences or your vision, sure, sure. right? But I, by my answer, I want to explain to you what I'm I said it. and I what you it. asked me. Okay. Well, the rubber meets the road is that Jesus says, I am the only way. Mm -hmm. You can't just worship God directly because I am equal to God. So if we don't believe Jesus, then we're actually not believing in God. For, for example, he's um, he's gonna explain Muslims that. believe in Noah, right? No. Prophet Noah? Uh, yeah, I mean, oh, God. we don't believe in God, but we believe yeah. that he As a prophet. Yeah. 
and God ordered him to build an ark, boat. And uh, during that time of Noah, people laughed at him. Yep. It was the only way for salvation to enter that ark or you will be perish. Right. If you start shouting, we love you Noah, we love you Noah, for hours, it and you don't go inside the boat, you die. Yep. Today, Muslims say, we love you Jesus, we love Jesus more than you, but if you don't obey him, mm -hmm. you will be perished. So God, God but, 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 but just okay. a second, the, the uh, boat is showing us God has only one way. Right. And all of God's all God's revelation in the fifteen hundred years, it was pointing to one thing. That boat is repre represents Christ. Mm -hmm. That he is providing today the new way of salvation. Mm -hmm. Man can laugh at it. Not the first time they laughed at God's only way. They laughed at Noah. Now people laugh. How can God become a man and die? This is not the first time they laugh at God's only way. That you enter the ark or you be perished. Uh, you have given a very beautiful example of Noah's Ark. You have never been on the Noah's Ark, Noah's Ark, right? In uh, Cincinnati, they built one. Kentucky. Kentucky, sorry. Yeah. Next to Cincinnati. So you said that <laughs> Noah's, Noah's <laughs> Ark was the only way of salvation. You have never been on the Noah's Ark, right? So how how do you have to salvation there? Yeah, at that time, salvation at that water. Time, that's salvation at from that water. Time. At the time of Jesus, no, no, at the time of Noah, at the time of Noah, what I'm saying is that you answered your question. Yeah. At that time, Noah's ark was the way of salvation. Yeah. At the time of Jesus, see, but you're not Jesus, the Noah's ark was there. You are not the, the difference. Is, yeah. For example, uh, let me complete. Okay. Let me complete. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> at the time of every prophet, to their people. Those are the only way to reach God. Okay. That is true for every prophet. Okay. At the time of Moses, you cannot say that oh, we already have Abraham or something, like yeah. some prophet before Noah. I, we don't believe in Moses. At the time of Jesus, you cannot say that we already have a Torah. Why do we need to believe in Jesus? So give me to but, but talk see, about salvation in two th this ways. Is, this is here all from beginning to end. It talks about the cross of Jesus. The story of Abraham, the sacrifice, it's a shadow of Jesus. John the Baptist, he said, this is the Lamb of God. Take away the sin of the world. They're waiting for the Lamb of God. The Lamb that God provided from heaven to earth, send it to Abraham to kill in the state of his son. That was a shadow of the Lamb of God coming without the sin. In the Quran, it says, Qulam Zakiya about Jesus that being without sin. What happened to Qulam and Zakiya when the angel was giving the good news to Mary, she's going to have a son. Olam and Zakiya, according to Ibn Kathir and Tabari and many other commentators, it says it means of a sinless son or a sinless boy. He is the only one is described as sinless because even Muhammad here, I have his prayers, his, his, uh, he used to ask for forgiveness of sin. But only Jesus without sin, he right. is the Lamb of God. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Someone has to pay for that price. In Islam, Allah can just let your sin go away, just not ignoring your sin, going against his justice in order to show you mercy. Or for infidels, Allah will show them justice but not mercy. He cannot do both. But in the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit is able to do both, to do, do justice one thing at one time. Uh, and, and mercy. The justice of God, think about that. Justice of God and mercy of God. How did God can do both of them for you? Your sin. Who can coming, pay for uh, your sin? Coming back to the Noah's Ark, the original discussion. But um, you are distracting. The only reason I say Noah's no, Ark, I want, I want, I want to show, I want to show is, Noah's Ark. Is, is the question is how does Jesus keep saving? If he came two thousand years ago, how does Jesus keep guaranteeing? No, no, that's not the question. Well, no, but but that's the thing. he's saying Jesus died for the people in his time, or yeah. give salvation for him. Not die, but give salvation for the people <laughs> in his time. If they follow Jesus. God will only give salvation. Yeah, but right. Jesus on the cross, he said, it's finished. Yes. Nothing else. That's he said, after me, false prophets are no coming. Prophets Nobody are else. He said, I'm the only way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father. He closed the door. Because right. yeah. all this talk about Jesus, 1,500 years of revelation, pointing to Jesus, is done on the cross. Yeah. He said, the last word, he said, it's finished. Yeah. I paid the price for your sin in full. Um, you have, you, you don't you have need that in God. 
Yes. You don't need you don't need to go back to the Ten Commandments to the law like the Quran. The Quran bringing the law again from the Old Testament bringing it back again. There is no need for the law. That Jesus said he summarized the law with two things: love the Lord your from all your heart and love your neighbor like yourself. This is people think it's I, easier. This is not I easier. Agree with this. Huh? I don't agree. Yeah, you said something. You said it is in the gospels. That is the gospel. The gospel right. is, is that Jesus. No, no, I mean the gospel. Right. Of the four gospels. Yes, yeah, the four gospels. No, but what does it mean, gospel? Gospel means good, good news. news. I know that. Yeah. yeah, but what is the good news? We need to be in, with God back again. Our relationship with God separated because of one sin from Adam separated us because God is holy, hundred percent pure. He cannot be with sin. He separated us. And God, the whole time here is the goal is to bring us back. The Torah, the Ten Commandments, mm -hmm. the Torah of Moses, do not kill, do not do this. Ten things. Nobody in the world was able to fulfill it. Why? Why Why would God give us a law we cannot fulfill? In the New Testament told us, the law is like a mirror. You see the dirt in your face, but it doesn't clean you. You have to have something else to do to clean up yourself. That's law. God give us ten things and nobody can follow to show us we are unable to save ourselves. Then he sent the Psalms. When we recognize... Would you agree that only God can save us? Yeah, but okay. Jesus... Then Father we don't need to spirit. argue about this anymore. Yeah. Then God can but, save but us. But the Psalms. But after that, God sent the Psalms. The Zabur. Yeah. The Zabur, when David recognized he's unable to save himself by the law, in the Psalms, or the Zabur, David crying out to God for help when he recognized, when man recognized they are unable to save themselves, they cry out to God for help. So then Adam cried to God. All then, the prophets I think cried to God. Then the Injil, yeah. then the Injil come, which is the good news. After man recognizing they cannot save themselves, after they cry out to God for help and recognizing that the only one can save them, God Himself. God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the Son, the second person in the Trinity, mm -hmm. is the perfect sacrifice he took upon himself a second nature came as a man and died for us then i went to the quran after that i went to the quran i could stop here but i went to the quran the quran said ya ahli kitab lastu ma'ala shay hatta taqimu at-tawrat wal injil you know what taqimu when they say aqimu as-salah when they say aqimu the prayers immediately go and pray is a very strong verb to obey immediately the quran said to me ahli kitab people of the book you are on nothing until you uphold the same word, Tatimu, at Tawratum al Injil. I must follow these books in order to be safe. The Quran told me that, send me not, back. Not, not after a particular period in time. That's the whole thing. Mm -hmm. So it's the element of time that you ignore in all these things. 1500 years, uh, 66 books for more than 40 prophets, all of them talking about one person. His name is Jesus. A lot of the people like disagree with you. Huh? Uh, Torah and the book of Jews, they disagree with you. Yeah, there's so many, the Christians in the world, where they come from? They were Jewish, became Christians. The, Jew, right. the Christians did that just I mean, from heaven. That's not an argument because all the Christians in the world, they used to be Jewish somehow. A lot some of Jews and Christians they, became Muslims. That doesn't mean I would yeah, say, okay, then yeah, the Quran is yeah, right. That's not an argument. But, you know, so the answer for this, Muhammad said, my, the Jewish divided to 73 groups. 71 groups, the Christians divided to 72 groups. My people will be divided to 73 groups, one going to heaven and the rest going to hell. Muhammad saying that the people that are going to heaven is the minority, the small number. If they're telling me the Jewish group, they disagree with me or not, doesn't matter. What matters is these books, if you study them, because heaven is not by luck. Do you agree heaven is not by luck? Is, is gambling allowed? Can you gamble? I didn't understand your question. Do you gamble? Heaven is by luck. What? Do you gamble? Gambling. I don't gamble. Why? Because haram, right? Yes, it's forbidden. Well, it's forbidden. Why? Because God give you blessings. You cannot just gamble with them. Um, okay, you, that's, that's, money, what you, that's what you think. You can just go uh, and waste it. No, it's a blessing. Right. You and me are more valuable than money. I cannot yes. say I was born a Christian. I will I, I live a Christian. I die a Christian. I cannot gamble with my life. Right, right. That's why I studied these books, and I studied the Quran, and the Quran sent me back to these books. Okay, very nice. But would you study these books? I do. Yeah. <laughs> you, you do read yeah. God's Word? Yeah, I do. Uh, I am very interested in reading Bible. That's awesome. It's very, actually it's very big as compared to Quran, so like it takes a lot of time to go through it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, like that was yeah, the Quran is like 6,000 verses. It's, 
Yeah. It, it's amazing what Muslims do. To memorize 6,000 verses, at, they require at least 4,000 they must uh, memorize because there are certain chapters if they memorize it is equal to one third of the Quran. But, but uh, nobody is required to do that, but anyway, uh, so I am interested in that why I am even here. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so glad you are here. I'm really glad you are here. Uh, can you verify that when you say that um, trial God, so yeah, Try God. It, yeah, so Jesus has some attributes uh -huh. and the God, for example, you say that love and justice. So you said that you want to you want to say that Jesus has love and the God has justice. I mean the Father has justice. All his spirit says you try to say that. No, no, and maybe I, I, no, no. I, I say because of the triune God, yeah, he can be come a man and die for our sins. If God is just one, mm -hmm. if God just one, he cannot do that. He, if I mean, God one and died, he's died, dead, done. But because he's a Father, Son, Holy Spirit, he is able mm -hmm. to practice his justice okay. and love in the same time. Only a triune God can do so, that. In Allah, he, if He show you love and mercy, He will not be able to show you justice. He has to ignore your sin. Nobody can pay for your sins. And if He make you pay for your sin, He cannot show you His mercy. One of the two. So this is one of the two. about Islam. I mean, I'm just trying to understand the Christianity that when you say that uh, there is a child God and they, they, it is possible for him as a child God, it is possible for have just love, mercy at the same time, you do the triumph nature. So, you want to say that the father, what his attributes, and the son or the Jesus, his attributes are the same or is the difference? God, mean, God, 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 God has the same attributes, but they have, sometimes they have the same different jobs. So, but when you say that sometimes they have different jobs, for example, in the, in, the, in the gospel it is said that roles. So in the gospel, it is said that uh, when they, they asked about the day of judgment, Jesus said that I don't know. As a man, yeah. the second nature now, of yeah. Jesus, the second nature as a man. Now the he question, said that. yeah, as a man. So now the question is that at the same time, at the same time, he can he is hundred percent God as hundred percent man, or is different. If he is a hundred percent God and hundred percent man at the same time, and so. To the hundred percent man, do you believe he is a God or you just believe the hundred percent God nature? I believe Father, Son, Holy Spirit is one God, three persons. Okay. And I believe the second person in the triune God took upon himself a second nature as a man. That nature is not God. Okay, that the nature spiritual is nature is God. So the human nature of Jesus is not God. Yeah. Am, I, am I right? The human nature as a, as a body. Okay, so it's not God. Yeah. Okay, so now so now then he he has he has a beginning that one he has a beginning it was created okay. in Mary's yeah. okay so he's not God so I no so not Jesus is not God the second nature as a body he was created by God do that uh, hundred percent God and that nature of the human I, 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 I want to tell you something you try to understand the unlimited God in a way that you calculate it and hundred percent and hundred percent what you need to do, you need to ask God, reveal yourself to me, show me the way, which one is the way. Your way is, is way bigger than mine. You are above anything. It is, you know, you remind me with a story about this guy. He was having a problem accepting the idea of God. And one day he was walking, he was walking in the beach. Oh, make, it should be make sense in our own mind. For example, you think that, that has to make sense here? So, if you can talk about the other religion, for example, Hinduism, they will give you that, that kind of thing. Okay, you cannot understand that uh, cow is our god, sun is our god. They cannot say explain that kind of thing. If there's anything else, is there anything in the world like God? Is there anything like God? Is there anything like God? Is there anything like God? Uh, what yeah, you is there any human can be equal to God or anything else in the world like God? No. He's alone. God. Yeah. yeah. That's the. That's the. That's the. You, you're trying to understand the story. You're understanding the unlimited God with your limited ideas. Yeah, that's the only thing is you. There's so many things in Islam you accept. Don't worry about this. Don't be this. I'm not talking about this. No, but you're a Muslim. You accept things because it's written in your book too. There will be argument. I try to understand the concept of Christianity. So you, if you're bringing that, okay, there is argument in Islam to that. It should be argument. I'm not talking about argument. So I can also bring that. Okay, Hindu do that. Buddha do that. It should be argument. I'm just trying to answer. I mean, 
get the concept of what you believe. Yeah. So I mean, I, the God's word, yeah. God's yeah. word, say yeah. God is the Father, the Son, the Holy yes. Spirit. That one God, mm -hmm. the second nature, is, the second person in the triune God is Jesus. 2,000 years ago, he took upon himself a second nature as a man, and he came and was born out of Mary because to come and die for your sin and my sins. That's what is written so in the Bible. I'm just I'm going to say that, at, I mean, just a normal thing. At that time, when you become a man, flesh, uh, flesh man, he was God, or he was existed as a God or not? I cannot separate, I cannot separate God, so, two, two natures from each other. Jesus did not stop being God, forever going to be God. He cannot, there is that, the flesh with Jesus is one, I cannot separate the one. I cannot, I cannot separate his nature. Like, Jesus always functions as God as well. I mean, at the same time, like, or not. For example, for example, you see Jesus crying in front of his friend's grave, Lazarus. Jesus crying, and a few seconds later, you see Jesus ordering the dead to rise from the dead. You see the human nature crying. You see Jesus as God ordering Lazarus to be raised from the dead. In the boat, you see Jesus is sleeping as a man. In seconds later, Jesus as God ordering the ocean, the water, the waves, the river to stop them, and he controlled and obeyed him. You see every story in the Bible, you're going to see Jesus as man and Jesus as God side by side. You cannot separate the two. You cannot separate the two. But all this, it is not absolutely, it's a, a beyond our comprehension to understand that God, to leave his glory, come to this world to die on that cross. I know we don't deserve it. I agree with you. It's above our imagination that for God Himself to do that. But I want to make it a little bit easier for you. You believe the Quran is eternal, God's word, right? I'm, I'm not going to the Quran Islam. I told you that. It's, so don't bring up that kind of thing. But, but I, I, I want to give you my example. Try to just I want to give you an example. For example, uh, in the Christian, there is also original sin. So what you, I mean, we shall say that if any baby born today. He has or she has the original sin, though he didn't do anything. What's the Christian point of view? For example, who is born today? The baby. Does he or she has sin or not? Uh, it's, it's a big topic, but I do believe, I mean, what I do believe all we are all born with sin. We are all born so, with sin. So sin that is done by Adam and Eve, am I right? Yeah. So, you say inherit, 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 inherit uh, things, that, that someone did something and I am, uh, I do, I am belong to that sin, something like that? I mean, Adam and Eve, we inherited their sin. You, do you have kids? No, no, no. Okay. When you have kids one day, Oh, let's say your parents, when you have it, did they teach you to lie? No. Did they teach you to steal? It depends on which parents you use it. Maybe your par parents know. usually teach you good things, but you find most yourself doing bad stuff. Yeah, and also, Adam and Eve, they've been sent to this world. Imagine this world is the prison where they were sent to. We were all born in this prison. The punishment for Adam, according to the Bible, from the sweat of your work to eat, and for Eve, from with pain, you can have pain. It's until now, we receive this punishment. Until now, we have that. So you want to say that if my parents do something, for example, murder someone, then the the baby from them, they will also inherently reap. Uh, it has it. Adam sin against God, disobedient against God, affected our nature. We became, we, we fail. We cannot sin. And, but praise God, by the way, that we are not staying there and sinners for living for eternity. Praise God that He kicked us out here to die and we have a chance to come back again to a cleaner. Who don't believe that the who don't believe He has the sin? I mean, who don't believe in that that Christ? He has the sin. Sorry. We are late. <laughs> the centrality. But, but yeah. you think about the life? Five minutes. Five minutes. Is that okay? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, just one thing, please. One thing. The Quran teaches that Jesus is the Word of God. In the name of the in the name of the Lord, the Lord, the Lord. But also, the Quran is the Word of God. It's eternal. 
But Mohammed says this is Sunan Ibn Majah. You can go. Please take a picture of that. Please take, take a picture of that. You say the Quran in the day of judgment is going to become a man and going to be a witness against you. The Quran is going to speak in the day of judgment as a witness against you. I am a witness who read the Quran for long nights on a short night. The Quran word of Allah, eternal, is going to become a white man in the day of judgment. Jesus is the word of God, become a man. If you say the Quran being created according to Islam, you deserve to be put to death according to Islam, according to law. If you say this book being created, you deserve to be killed according to Sharia law. So How can you say Jesus being created is the word of God? So you say that if anyone say that it is created, that means uh, yes. so you will be yeah, According to Sharia law, please check that stuff. I, I, if you have a way to get hold of them, they call here, they can give you my phone number. I will send you the exact references about you. They should put you to death and they discuss it for two volumes, books, Islamic books. If they crucify you upside down or what they do to you, if you send them around being created because it's God's word. You cannot say God was silent before the Quran. You cannot say the Quran being created, otherwise Allah would be silent before it. But if Jesus is, because if Jesus, if you cannot, say, if you cannot say the Quran book of God can be created, then Jesus, then Jesus cannot be created because according to the Quran, Jesus, Oh Jesus, Jesus is the word of God and the Spirit. If you cannot say the Quran being created, you cannot say Jesus being created.